I haven't started my car for two weeks. I'm low on fuel. It's not good to leave your car just kind of sitting there and not running for weeks at a time. So I started the car up today to take it for a drive and probably get some fuel. I came to the post office because a few kind people have informed me that they've sent me things and I haven't really left the house much for 32 days. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna wear my mask. I'm gonna use hand sanitizer. I'm gonna go in, check my PO box and go out and that's it. So here I go. Most counties and areas have asked that residents wear masks when they go out in public. So I got my mask and here I go. Thankfully the gas station looks empty. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up since I'm almost out of gas over here and about that time. Since my car has been sitting untouched for two weeks and before that two weeks, I decided to go ahead and purchase a car wash because I like it, it's relaxing, but mostly because my car really, really needs it. deal with that when things are, you know, back to normal-ish. All filled up on gas and all clean, at least on the outside of the car. I'm home, woo! Normally a daily excursion for me would be something a lot more exciting. As you guys know, if you've been joining me on the adventures, maybe we'd be trying a new restaurant at a resort or checking out a new ride at a theme park or comparing different rides restaurants, attractions, maybe going to some off the beaten path cool place that has like a dinner show or riding a crazy ride like the Starflyer, which I haven't ridden yet and I was right about to before all of this happened, but we'll get there, we'll get there. Maybe we'd even be hopping on a plane to head to Europe to check out ancient monuments and ancient cities and cool, modern, new out of the way things, all of which we've done here on the channel and have been amazing adventures that I know we'll get back to. But in the meantime, we're doing these day vlogs. But basically, this is a series of videos that I'm doing in my home where we're either maybe cooking in the kitchen, going out to fill my car with fuel and get a car wash, talking about things we're watching on Netflix or YouTube or Disney Plus. Oh, by the way, when I got home from being out today, first, I left my shoes, bags, camera, cell phone at the door, washed my hands thoroughly, took my clothes off, put them right into the washer, put whatever else was in the hamper in there, set them to wash with warm water, washed my hands again, went back to the door, got my phone and my camera, disinfected them. With the few Clorox wipes I have left, I disinfected everything. I kind of like used them as much as I could to get the most use out of them, but still have them be effective. Wiped everything down, washed my hands again. My hands are so dry today. I also uh, took a cloth face mask with me and I put that in the wash with the laundry that I washed in a garment bag so that, you know, to keep it in good shape. Then I took clothes out of the dryer and I put them on the couch behind me. So if you can see some laundry, that's why. It's not usually there, but it's there right now because I'm in the middle of doing that laundry now. Everything I do that involves touching anything that was outside involves me washing my hands like as you're supposed to do. And now it's that time in the afternoon where the sun's coming in the window and it feels so good. And I like to go up to the window and just feel the sun coming in. Sometimes I go out in like a tank top and just sit on the balcony and like soak in the sun. And I'm not getting as much sun as I'm used to getting because I'm usually outside all the time. So I definitely like feel it. I feel like so pale <laughs> and I'm not used to that, but it's nice to just, <sighs> get some sun. The reason I haven't gone back to my P.O. box is because I didn't want to go anywhere that wasn't necessary because of everything that's going on. But the reason I did go today is because there are people that I care about who have sent things to me and the things that they have sent mean something to me and mean something to them and I want to make sure I retrieve them in a timely way and I had to send some things that were important as well. So I had to make that trip 
I did, I'm glad I did. I was in and out and I wore my mask and sanitized after and there weren't many people there at all and everyone kept a lot of space from each other, which was nice. But I wanna thank my friends who sent me items. I really and truly appreciate them. There are things that happen in my life that I don't talk about in the vlogs and just like a lot of people who do blogging and vlogging or a creative endeavor of any kind, you share parts of yourself but you don't maybe share everything. Um, Recently, I lost a family member. I haven't talked about it here. I did post about it on social media. So if you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, you may have seen the posts. The response that I've received back from people has been so incredibly kind and helpful. Just the thoughts, the prayers, the kind words, the messages, the comments. Even I even received some cards, which I so unexpected and so thoughtful. I really and truly appreciate that. I uh, I don't I don't ask for anything except for you to watch these videos and enjoy them. And if you enjoy them, give them a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Anything beyond that is just tremendously appreciated. And I I just I do not have the words, especially right now. The reason I'm talking about this is just to thank the people who have reached out. If I haven't gotten back to all of you, please know um, it's very overwhelming but I've read everything and I have cried <laughs> about your messages. Um, tears of, of appreciation. I'm blessed with a community and group of people who are very caring and friends who are very caring and kind and I am babbling, but I'm just grateful. I thank you. Where am I going with this? Thank you is where I'm going. Just thank you. Um, it's, it's been hard. It's never easy. If you are a praying type of person, prayers for my family are appreciated. And uh, as you can see, I'm wearing my Mickey Space Mountain shirt and I'm ready to do nothing. At least my neighbors are quiet today. I was going to bake a confetti cake today and I was really excited for that confetti cake. I was like hankering for it but I couldn't get the ingredients because um, I didn't get them while I was out. I thought I could get them through Instacart, which I'm, I've been ordering through on a regular basis, and they're so backed up that they can't deliver for a day or two now. So I did order it. We will get that confetti cake. Get hype, get excited for a baking video. We're gonna make a confetti cake, but today I just had some spaghetti for dinner. Vegetarian meatballs. Oh, while we're in the kitchen, has anybody else heard of this weird stuff? Robinson's or Ribena? I had never heard of this stuff before Sam. And it's like flavoring you put in water. So this one's black currant, obviously. He likes this one more. And this one is orange. I want water that tastes like something. I just drink a LaCroix. This is like flavored fizzy water and it's just basically seltzer water with ever so slight natural flavors supposedly there's nothing bad in it hopefully there's nothing bad in it let's have one now I'm thirsty ah fizzy water you can just smell that like ever so slight smell of fresh orange i like drinking water i like drinking tea i drink a lot of tea and Sometimes, yeah, I get wanting water that tastes like something else and wanting a little fizz. I don't drink soda, so like this is the closest I get to soda, but I've tasted Ribena on Robinson's and it is not my jam. What is my jam though? It's Marmite. I love Marmite. <laughs> I tasted Marmite for the first time on my first trip to England back in September and I really like it. I like a buttered toast with a thin layer of Marmite on it. If you've never tried it, don't go in eating a giant spoonful. It's gonna be awful. It's very like umami and savory tasting and it's like nothing you've ever tasted before. But toast some bread, put a nice thin layer of warm melty butter on it and then a nice thin layer of Marmite on top of the warm melty butter. Do it all while the toast is warm. Mmm, you're gonna like it. Probably, maybe. People either love or hate Marmite. I don't, I don't get it. I love it though. Should I title this video, American loves Marmite, not clickbait.
I'm back in the kitchen because a little time has passed since the last clip where I was talking about Mermite and I was kind of doing some stuff around the apartment and I started thinking about it and the more I thought about it I was like I need my Marmite now. So it's 8.30 at night on a Saturday night. Our big party tonight is Marmite party! So Marmite party. So I'm gonna get some toast going so we can make the Marmite. And this is gonna be my Saturday night dinner. Got a big plate, got a knife, Toast is toasting. Got butter. I believe it's not butter. We bought these. I bought these and they were two for one. Like I said in my last video, this isn't my normal butter, but I don't really eat a lot of butter anyway. But I, if I do, I normally buy like the most natural butter I can. Because I can't believe it's not butter. Don't judge me. We have got our mama ready. So a lot of people ask, what is Marmite? I also had that same question. Marmite is yeast extract, and it says here on the bottle, it's rich in B vitamins and it's vegan. The ingredients are yeast extract, barley, wheat, oats, rye, salt, vegetable juice concentrate, vitamins, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, B12, and folic acid, natural flavoring contains celery. So a lot of vitamins in here. The toast is ready. Now let me show you how I recommend you try Marmite if you've never tried it before. So you butter your bread, right? Butter it as much or as little as you desire, but you want to try to do it while the bread is still nice and toasty so it spreads nicely. Then, you know, however many slices, I usually do two, I don't know why, I just have it of having two slices of toast. There's something about the mix of butter and Marmite that just like, it mellows down the Marmite a little bit and it like brightens up the butter. Then I like to wipe off or clean off the knife because you don't want to get the butter into the Marmite. And it's kind of got like a tar-like texture to be honest with you. Um, or maybe like caramel? Like a caramel type of texture. You can see that. So you want to just get a blob and just spread it as good as you can. It, it likes to blob up. It doesn't want to spread. You kind of got to gently coerce it into spreading. Oh, that looks good. That's the way you want to see it. I'm going to give this knife another wipe because don't want to get the butter back in here. I like to keep my Marmite uncontaminated. Let's get a big blob. Oh yeah. That wasn't big enough of a blob. Was not big enough. We need to go back for a second blob. Let's get more. Oh yeah. I like it around the edges too. Okay. And then I like to cut it. Whether you like to cut it like that, or diagonally, however you like it, is totally fine. Just, it's nice to slice it. Let's put this away, and let's have our Marmite toast. I personally like my Marmite toast with a cup of coffee or tea in the morning, but it's nighttime right now. We're gonna have our chamomile tea soon, but we'll just go ahead and start, and I'll try to explain to you what it tastes like. Mmm. It's kind of salty. Um, it's savory. It's very like rich. It tastes, I really like, I don't know what to compare it to. Like, like a buttery, tarry, thick soy sauce. When you get a big chunk, it's like very, I don't want to say tart. I know I keep saying umami. But I, I believe it's umami. Very like, just savory and earthy. Mmm, it's very interesting. As Pee Wee Herman would say, mmm, yeasty. Cause it's yeast extract, get it? And that's it. That's how I like my Marmite. And that is how I recommend you try Marmite if you've never tried it before and you're like, I really want to try it, I'm curious what it tastes like, but everyone makes this big fuss and these crazy faces when they bite into it, so I don't know if I'm gonna like it. Try it on toast with butter. 
I thank you guys again for joining me for these day vlogs, these home vlogs, whatever you wanna call them, day in the life videos where I share what I'm doing with you. Either in the next video or the one after, we'll make that confetti cake because I am waiting for those ingredients. And like, once you start thinking about confetti cake, you need confetti cake. But I'm gonna make it my way with a little twist. It's actually an anti-twist. You'll see when we get there. So I will see you in the next video. And until then, as always, stay mellow and stay enthused. Bye. Hi there. Welcome to the Disney Bedtime Hotline, brought to you by ShopDisney.com. To help you create some magic moments in your little one's nighttime routine, follow the prompts to hear a special bedtime message from some of your little one's favorite Disney characters. Press 1 to hear from Mickey. Press 2 to hear from Minnie. Press three to hear from Donald. Press four to hear from Daisy. Or press five to hear from Goofy. Thanks for calling and have a magic- Hiya, pal. It's me, Mickey Mouse. Oh, I sure am glad you called. Gosh, it must be getting close to your bedtime. I bet by now you've brushed your teeth and gotten into your pajamas. Well, that's great. Pluto and I just finished brushing our teeth too. Tonight, I think I'll read Pluto his favorite story. It's about a brave dog who helps a lost bunny rabbit find his way home. Well, it's time for Pluto's nighttime walk, so I'd better go. Good night, pal. I hope you have sweet dreams.